So let's move on to this one. It's really interesting. The women's tennis organization has, from the very beginning of Peng Shui's initial disappearance, and then they put out these hostage videos in China and that hostage statement from her basically saying, hello everyone, this is Peng Shui. I'm fine. I may return and promote Chinese tennis. By the way, those accusations against the former vice premier of China are totally not true. And everything that the WTA said was a lie, pointing at the women's tennis organization. Now, to their eternal credit, the Women's Tennis Organization has taken one of the most brave stances that I have seen in Western sports so far when it's come to, with Chinese political entanglements. Their chairman, Steve Simon, has repeatedly come out and said, we don't believe this statement was written by Peng Shui. We think she's still you know, in danger. We're very concerned about her safety, about her initial accusation, and, uh, you know, I already know the segment will be demonetized. I don't really care, but, you know, she, in her initial uh, accusation on Weibo, on Chinese social media, said that she was raped by the former vice premier of China, one of the most powerful men. Allegedly, he's a billionaire. He really runs a lot of the things behind the scenes. It was taken down within 30 minutes from the entire Chinese internet. It was scrubbed, and then she was in, disappeared her for a matter was of locked. weeks. locked. You couldn't respond to her. Locked. If, nothing. Yeah. She was totally locked down, and then the fake statement came out of her saying that it wasn't true. Now, from the beginning, WTA has been saying, we don't believe these statements. We do think the initial accusation was true. We're very concerned about her safety. We haven't been able to get in touch with her. They put out that statement, etc. Then initially they released those hostage videos. I put you those where there she was like, hi, it's me, Pung. I'm out in dinner with my friends. By the way, the date is so-and-so. <laughs> yes, I always natural, say the date um, in the course of when I'm having dinner with my friends while also they're filming me. Uh, if that happens, it's usually a weirdo. Okay, so the WTA has now put out a statement, a very brave statement, let's put it up there on the screen, saying that they will be suspending all tournaments in China from here on out. Now, this is a huge deal because, because of Peng, actually, China was become, or te women's tennis was becoming quite popular within China. Yeah. And merchandise and more that Peng was associated with was becoming big. You know, she was held up by the Chinese state as a, you know, a propaganda saying like, look at this amazing tennis player. I mean, she is one of the world's best women's tennis players, especially yeah. in doubles. And so they were holding her up as an ideal of the Chinese woman um, and the Chinese athlete and on the world stage. They say she's a household name in China. A literal household name. Yeah. Uh, remember, household name there is a billion people, okay? So women's tennis was actually a tennis organization that would draw a lot of people. I can tell you, you know, at least I lived in Qatar when I was a kid, um, and they would always have these, you know, the stars that would come in, and they would do these, you know, exhibition tournaments and more. These are big money makers for the players and for the tennis associations themselves. They don't actually make all that much of their income on the big ones, the Wimbledons, the U.S. Open, and more. So these are where your real money is made as an athlete, in the fees and all that stuff that it generates. So for the women's tennis organization to declare non grata, we are not coming to China whatsoever. Recognizing Pen Shui's message, they said, has to be listened and taken seriously. The players, the women around the world, they're saying, are not agreeing to play in China. This is, look, I don't really like Naomi Osaka and her trauma BS or whatever in the past, but credit to her uh, for coming out, putting that tweet, because it's over. Whatever you had endorsed in the past or any ad reads, you will be disappeared from the Chinese internet, from Chinese society. It basically won't exist over there. Same thing with Novak Djokovic. Posting these things, Serena Williams. Serena I mean, these people, they, they work with Nike. And you, we know that Nike has used its lobbying organization to lobby against slave labor restrictions on cotton here in the United States in our Congress. So this you puts a say, lot of their business deals at risk. And you might say, look, these are people who are already rich. But we've seen in the past yeah, people LeBron's who are a billionaire, rich okay? who still like, yeah. are like, oh, I don't want to risk you know, making even more money. It seems like people who are rich, like it's never enough. No, James Harden and LeBron, I, mean, I don't think if LeBron's actually a billionaire, by the way. But you know, he's, he's probably pretty close. He's, he's good. He's half a, definitely half a billion or something like that. Yeah. Didn't stop him from licking the boots um, during I mean, I think it's, And I think their statement is pretty interesting because they say, um, in good conscience, this is from the World Tennis Organ uh, Association, in Women's Tennis Association, in good 
conscience, I don't see how I can ask our athletes to compete there when Peng Shui is not allowed to communicate freely and has seemingly been pressured to contradict her allegation of sexual assault. Given the current state of affairs, I'm so greatly concerned about the risk that all of our players and staff could face if we were to hold events in China in 2022 as part of the statement here. And I do think the fact that you had so many top stars yes. come out um, and you know make their feelings on this clear uh, and again, WTA has been good from the start, but I'm sure the fact that they had some of their most they visible, had, had up from the biggest top stars. stars right. And look, I mean, all these these players, they're they're close. They know each other really mm -hmm. well. So I'm sure the fact that, especially when she when nobody even knew where she was, like that personal attachment and concern for someone that you know quite well, I'm sure really weighed heavily into all of this. But pretty interesting development. No, I mean. It, Amount of courage that really cannot be overstated because there, this is real financial consequences which will hit all of these athletes in the future. I'm certain of it. It could cost them tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in endorsement deals. Nike and all of them are 100% getting calls from the CCP telling these people to go ahead and shut up. And I wanted to show everybody here the other side of the coin. This is what the billionaires, uh, this particular one I'm about to show you, Ray Dalio, is famous on Wall Street for being one of the first people to invest in China. He's traveled to China many times. He is one of the top apologists um, in China, or sorry, in the United States and on Wall Street for China. It's basically saying, I don't really care what the Chinese government does as long as they make me money. He was recently on CNBC, the Billionaires Network. Every once in a while, they get lobbed a difficult question. Watch this man twist himself in order to explain that China's disappearance of Jack Ma and of Peng Shui is just them acting like a strict parent. Not a joke. Let's take a listen. One of the quick questions I just want to ask you on China, though, is clearly there's, there's human rights issues. Uh, there's questions right now about this Chinese tennis player, uh, Peng Shui. There have been questions about Jack Ma. H how do you think about that piece of it when it relates to investing there? Well, I can't be an expert in those types of things. What I basically do, and I, for 50 years, I, um, I invest all over the world. I look uh, to whatever the rules are. The, if the government is send, has a policy that I should do a certain thing and so on, but I can't be an expert in all of those, uh, those particular dynamics of, of that. I'm, I really have no idea. They, um, so the guidance of the, you know, the government and is, you know, the most important thing. It's um, these are political. It's like and then I look at the United States and I say, well, what's going on in the United States? And should I not invest in the United States because other things and not our own human rights issues or other things, you know, and I'm not trying to make political comparisons. I'm basically just trying to follow the rules, understand what's going on and, and invest uh, properly. But, but Ray, in line but, but Ray you, you recognize. Yeah, I mean, he goes on there to be like, you recognize that there's a little bit of a difference here. And actually, he can't really tell you the difference. I just think, look at the twists and the turns of this. And once, what we were just pointing to, Crystal, he's a billionaire, many times over. Oh, this is one of the richest yeah. people on the planet. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the richest men in the world. Top hedge funder in the world. So you've got <laughs> plenty of money. Why can't you just be like, yeah, it's pretty messed up. It may, you know, reconsider what I, you know, invest. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, you know, it, every single time. These people bend over backwards because they worship at the altar of money. Jamie Dimon, same thing just happened. Put this up there on the screen. Happened uh, over the Thanksgiving weekend. He was at a conference. He made a joke that the bank was likely to outlast China's Communist Party. He immediately had to come out and say, I, I have, I'm so sorry, I regret making that statement. I should not have made a joke that JP Morgan, the bank, is likely to outlast the Chinese Communist Party. How is that even a joke? That's not even First of all, it's actually not funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it's actually not funny at all, so it's I think a we're joke. being a little loose with terminology yeah. when we call it a joke, yes. but anyway. Jamie Dimon is a billionaire, okay? A billionaire. Well, well established um, on Wall Street, but they've got too much money uh, in order to lose. And the Chinese Communist Party has made it clear that if you, you know, cross us in any way, even in your own country, doesn't matter, boom, you're gonna get hit with massive financial consequences. So that is just two sides of the coin. The WTA is gonna lose money 
And in the future, they will never forget this. I've spoken with people who were involved uh, with Ai Weiwei when he got the Nobel Prize and all of that. Sweden never recovered economically from what China did to them. Uh, previously, with South Korea, people might remember this, but 2015, 16, or whatever, we decided to put these things called the THAAD missile system inside of uh, South Korea. Uh, is a North Korean missile defense thing. China freaked out about it. Um, anyway, they started waging massive economic warfare on the South Koreans, canceling concerts, canceling uh, tourism, one of the number one things that was happening with South Korea. It caused a real economic problem for them over there. That's what they do on the nation state level. On the uh, private company level, H&M, uh, again, a Swedish company, was massively lashed out for just for putting out a statement saying we will not be buying cotton from Xinjiang. Same with Nike, having to put out that statement. They disappeared H&M from the Chinese internet. It cost H&M billions and billions of dollars in sales, not to mention problems in terms of their supply. So this is a very real, uh, a real thing, and that's two sides of the coin, the bootlickers and then the people who are like, no, you know what? We're actually gonna stand up and we're gonna make a choice. It's not the easy one, and I think that not enough people get enough credit for making it. The interesting it. thing about Dalio, too, is he's not consistently terrible. Sometimes he says things that are actually pretty Yeah, every consistent. once in a while. So, like, he said that he thought uh, inequality was, he said that was like a dire threat to the government or an uh, imminent threat or something like that. He's made some decent, uh, he said it was a national emergency, that's what he said. So, he's like, not consistently terrible. Yeah, but then he's one of those people who'd be like, but the inequality is the Federal Reserve's fault or something. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? or, yeah. well, or he, the moment that you were like, all right, well, tax, he'd be yeah. like, okay. socialism, whoa, 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 whoa. you know? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hold on like a that. second. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, look, doubt, anyway. you can't be an idiot and become a multi-billionaire. But, you know, this just goes to show you that, if anything, it's worse whenever you're able to elucidate something intelligent on one subject and then you twist yourself into a pretzel whenever you're asked about one of the most basic questions about, well, does this, here's the other thing. He didn't even say, are you going to stop investing in China? He's like, does this impact your thinking at all? I could have given a better answer if I was a shill. I would have been like, you know, it's certainly something of concern, but our core metrics show that we're going to see growth for our investors, for ourselves, I just, and I we guess, foresee a better future. I Come like on. it when people are just up front. Yeah. We make a lot of money there. Yeah. <laughs> and I know I won't make that money yeah. if I say anything. Yeah. So next I'm just, question. Next question, Andrew. That, you know? Honestly, it would have been better. We would have been better off. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.